Hey everybody, today on our Facebook Live, we're going to talk a little bit about how to talk to your manic loved one. And I know this is a topic that we all struggle with, and I hope I can help you a little bit with this. I know when my course comes out, there'll be a whole lot of lessons that deal with this. But right now, let me see if I can help you get started, or at least get a little bit down the road. Now, when, you're, when your loved one is manic, they... They have attributes that you're all too familiar with. They're very, I like to, I hate to say it this way, but I call it godlike. They think they're all powerful, all knowing. And whenever you try to have a conversation with them, as you know, they will step all over your conversation. They will dominate the conversation. Being talkative is one of the key characteristics of being manic. So they're going to dominate the conversation. They're, I'd be surprised if they asked you any questions about your input or your insights. And they're going to be very upset if you disagree with them. And it's just because you're disagreeing. Remember, they think they're God almost. And who would disagree with God? And, and, and you're trying to correct them rightfully so because I'm sure they're whatever they're saying is doesn't make any sense I mean I've done this many 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 times myself in my own mania I you know I mean I thought I was going to be a United States Senator when I was 19 you know and I told everybody I'd be running that year <laughs> serious 19 years old so who wanted to really listen to that and then people would argue with me and that's how we lose our friends that's how we, nobody wants to talk to us after a while. So what do you do about this? They're going to be, they're going to be very certain in what they're saying. They're going to talk about topics they know very little about. They're going to feel like they're an expert on everything. And they're going to feel like you should just listen. And they'll go on forever. So how do you deal with this? Well, um, I'd. I hate to say that there's not a lot we can do, but there are a few things. One thing is to keep in mind, and if you watch my other video about Bipolar Bob and Bob, um, I encourage you to do that. But what you're listening to in mania is your bipolar loved one, not your loved one. And it's a huge difference. You're listening to the illness. And the illness is not going to make any sense. That's the bad news. The good news is when he stops or she stops talking that way, and it may even be in a day or two or it may take a month or two or whatever, all that what they're talking about is going to be forgotten. I, I, I remember coaching a family where the mom, the daughter had run away and went to live with other friends because the conflict was too much for her and the daughter. And the daughter would come and visit the mom almost each week and have a different place she was going to go. One, one visit was New York City. The next visit was um, Guatemala. The next visit was like Mexico City. The next visit was something else. And I kept counseling the mother. I coached her because I know I've done this before. I said, your daughter isn't going anywhere. Trust me. She's going to be back home telling you she's going somewhere else she's going to go back and live with her friends she's going to come visit you she's going to come back with another idea of where she's going to go and she's not going to do it we don't really have the wherewithal we 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 have all the energy and the go but we usually don't have the wherewithal to go do all these things that we talk about doing and sometimes we do i, I coach another family where they the son did leave and he went away for a while to uh, another state and they, they, they caught up with him later on after he got really sick and that does happen but for the most part we just don't have the wherewithal to carry out the stuff we're talking about it's just too far-fetched and so my best advice is to not disagree openly I don't mean for you to have to agree 
with them openly, but don't disagree with them openly. You can disagree all you want in your head, but I can promise you, as you probably already know, disagreeing with them is a fight. And it's always going to be a fight. It's always going to be a fight because in their mind, you're disagreeing with their godlike powers. And so the best thing you can do is reflect back a lot of what they're saying, but not with any criticism or judgment. This is how you can keep into a conversation with them if you want to stay in a long conversation with them. But reflecting back what they say is a way to verify or a way to validate what they're saying to them. And it keeps you magnetic. It keeps them attracted to being with you. And that's the key during mania. The key thing is to do is to try to stay connected somehow, some way. And try to do it in a in a in a in as low an emotional state as possible. And I'll tell you why as we finish this this Facebook live. Emotional expressive emotion is what the the, um, the psychiatrists call it. The researchers call it. And expressed emotion is when there's conflict in the words that we use both ways. And I understand why there'd be conflict. I'll tell you I'm. I, if I was a supporter, I don't know. I, I don't know if I could have dealt with it or not. But I can tell you how it looks for me, from my manic standpoint, from my bipolar standpoint. It 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 is important that that the 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 conversation, um, the magnetic, the expressed emotion is as low as it can be. And if it can't be low, then the amount of contact has to be low. If you have high expressed emotion and high contact, uh, like they live with you, the, the loved one lives with you, then it's going to cause a lot of stress in your bipolar loved one. And stress is one of the biggest ways to create mania and sustain mania. So more stress from expressed emotion more mania, more, uh, more, more expressed emotion, more stress, more stress, more mania, more bad behavior. So I know what I'm asking you to do is very hard and I don't know that I could do it myself, but if you could just repeat back what he's saying or she's saying and don't take it too seriously. It's just, it's just gibberish. His, his or her brain is going a million miles an hour. When I'm manic, I probably can think about 30 things a second and I can't keep a single thought straight once I start it and you'll see that I'm sure you've already seen that they'll start talking about this and then they'll go talk about that and then they'll talk about this and they'll talk about that and they'll never circle back you know that that, that, that mother I told you about with the daughter going to New York and Guatemala and all these places the daughter never really finished the conversation about going to New York you know and I taught the mother just to say that sounds really cool tell me more and in a way it does sound pretty cool I know it's not cool because she shouldn't be going but the mother expressed an interest and and she wasn't really faking it she just was really like tell me more about it I'd love to go to New York myself I hope that when you set up there I can go all the while knowing that this is not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. They don't have the wherewithal to do it. And and if things are fine at home, if there's attraction instead of repulsiveness, if there's magnetic attraction at home, they're going to want to stick around. It's the best place for them, and they know that. So I know I'm asking a lot, but what you can do, if you can do it, just sound really interested in whatever they're saying, it doesn't matter. I mean, I was trying to convince people into giving me a helicopter, okay? And and it only frustrated me when they would argue with me. If they would have said, sure, getting a helicopter sounds a great idea, I'd probably still have them as friends. And I still, but it was very repulsive to me. I would have never got the helicopter. I don't know how to fly a helicopter. I don't know anything about a helicopter. But I wanted a helicopter because I was sick. It's bipolar Bob saying that. 
it's your bipolar loved one saying that so i hope this tip helps you a lot today i look forward to having the course out pretty soon and i'll announce that on facebook live and i'll also announce that on the bipolar solutions page hey thanks for joining me today and you take the very best care of yourself and we'll see you next time okay all right bye now Oh, okay. Yeah, turn it oh. On.